Hi, Andrew Cuneo here. Today I'm going to have kind of a different video. It's going to be the good, the bad, and the ugly of alchemy and my thoughts on the changes that it's made to Arena. So Alchemy's been out for about three weeks at this point. I went on a couple of podcasts right when it came out. I went on the MTG Goldfish podcast, and I went on the Midweek Metagame podcast. And I was pretty excited about Alchemy. I was pretty positive about the changes. I thought that it was a necessary step for Wizards to be taking to start making a standard format or, you know, a format that's using the newest sets, which they're calling Alchemy now, that would be exciting to play for more than just the first week or two that the cards came out. The, the previous two years of standard had just been really stale, hadn't been well balanced, and so it didn't have a lot of replayability. And I think that everybody is looking for Arena to be a game where there's a good amount of replayability. So with that, let's uh, get into the good, the bad, and the ugly of alchemy. Let's get the ugly out of the way right at the start. I think it's not going to surprise anyone that the ugliest part of all of this is the impact it's had on the arena economy. I'm not going to dig into that too much in this video. There's lots of other people who've made videos talking about it. If you're interested in seeing somebody rant about that, uh, you can go watch those. This isn't going to be one of those videos in part because the arena economy doesn't really impact me in the way that it impacts a lot of people. I like drafting a lot. I draft way more than most users or almost any users. So honestly, I am able to win enough in draft that I have enough wild cards that I can just craft whatever I want. I never have to worry about buying gems to buy packs, to get wild cards, to make the cards I want. I just I have enough wild cards that I can make whatever I want. So the, the economy doesn't impact me a ton, so I'm not the best person to comment on that. That said, I will make two quick points about it. The first is that I think that definitely Arena needs to change the way they're handling nerfs to cards. If they're nerfing a card and it's, you know, if it's applying in standard or in historic, they should let you trade in your card for an equivalent wild card. Not just straight up give you the wild cards like they've done in the past for bannings because you can still use the cards after they're nerfed, but you should 100% be allowed to just say, okay, you've nerfed Goldspan Dragon. I don't want to play with that with the new nerf. Give me four wild cards and I will give you my four Goldspan Dragons. I think that is something that really just needs to happen. The other thing I would say is that I think that the size of the new digital only cards, Alchemy Supplemental Set, I guess I'll call it, was just way too large. I think that a lot of people looked at it, looked at how many rares and mythics were in the 63 card set. It was a much higher percentage of rares and mythics than normal. I don't think there were any commons. There was a handful of uncommons. And they just saw a lot of rares and mythics and they said, this is just way more cards to craft than I'm ever going to have wild cards for. I don't want to spend enough money to buy all of these cards. So this set is not for me. And honestly, to people who thought that, I would say you could do a lot in Alchemy if you could come up with enough wild cards to make a play set of a rare or a play set of maybe two rares and an uncommons. There were things that you could add to your deck that you didn't need to spend a lot of rare wild cards, but I think a lot of people didn't even want to give Alchemy that much of a chance. They just looked at the size of the set and said, there's no way I'm going to collect all of this. I don't want to play a format where I'm not really going to have access to the cards, so I'm just not going to give it a shot. So I think going forward, the set should just be smaller. And they announced when they made the announcement for Alchemy that this initial set was going to be twice as large as future sets would be. And the reason was because it was covering all of the sets that have been added to standard so I think it's covering five or six sets. And going forward, they're envisioning releasing an Alchemy supplemental set with each new release. So they were saying that the future sets would be about half the size. I think the sets should be far smaller than that. I think that we should be looking at, you know, maybe there's 10 new cards per set that's added to Arena. Both to make it less daunting for people to collect the cards. And also just because if you looked at the 63 cards, a lot of them were just not 
exciting cards. There was no reason for them to exist. These aren't cards that are going to get played in limited. Uh, you know, maybe a third to half of the set, you could just read the card and you knew there's no chance this is going to go on a competitive deck. I'm never going to play this in draft. And maybe there's an occasional person who was really interested in building a deck around it and they're going to try some weird deck. But that's just, there wasn't a big enough audience for the for a lot of the rares and mythics. There are, I've played a ton of alchemy on the ladder and there's probably half the rares I've never seen anyone cast. And there's another set that I'm the only one who's ever played because a lot of people didn't want to spend their wild cards on cards that were obviously not good enough to be competitive. So I think going forward, the set should just be smaller. So that gets the ugly out of the way. Let's move on to what I consider to be the good part of alchemy. And the, the, the good thing, the big headline is basically standard was really stale before they did this. We'd had months of is it control decks based around Alrun's Epiphany dominating standard and they were basically just fighting off mono green and mono white and none of the other decks could really keep up. Standard really needed to be shaken up and Alchemy succeeded in doing that. I thought going in there was a danger that what was going to happen was Aaron's Epiphany and Goldspan Dragon were nerfed, but Expressive Iteration was left unchanged. And that meant we were just going to get to a new blue-red control deck based around Expressive Iteration that was the best deck. That hasn't happened at all. We've seen a bunch of new decks. There's kind of a black-white sacrifice deck based around Sanguine Brushstroke. There are Dragons decks based around some of the new cards. Some people at least tried Clerics decks based around some of the new Clerics. So we've, we've gotten to see a dramatically shaken up metagame. And I think that that is really just great. That was what Arena needed and Alchemy succeeded in doing that. The other thing I would say that's good about it is a lot of the digital only cards I found to be very fun to play with and against. I definitely enjoyed playing a lot of the Spellbook cards. I think Key to the Archive is really fun to play with. Same with the Cursed Bound Witch. Uh, even some of the other spellbook cards, I didn't try them that much, but it was fun to play against them just because it meant that even if you weren't changing your deck, even if you were playing a matchup you'd played out before, something new was going to happen. There, it added a little bit of diversity to the gameplay, which I think Constructed Magic can definitely benefit from. And also, it's just cool to see cards that you would not normally ever see played in a Constructed game make their way into a game of you know, a competitive game of alchemy. Like you would never see Curse of Leeches or Torment of Scarabs show up in someone's deck, but those cards are getting cast because people are getting them off the Curse Bound Witch. And the key to the archive, it allows you to play all these cards from Strixhaven's Mystical Archives that are just fun, nostalgic throwbacks to the magic cards in the past. I mean, that one, you were getting very good cards, but it was coming at a fairly high cost. So I think the cards overall were uh, were and are just fun to play with. They're, they're fun, interesting magic cards. I've seen complaints online that people think that the new digital-only cards are not well-balanced. And I actually take issue with that. I think that there are some cards that are maybe a little bit too good. There are certainly pl plenty of cards that are better than others. But there are no cards that really stand out as something that's like a Nomnath or a new Oko where it gets printed in the first time you play it, you're like, this is way, way too good. How did they ever make a card like this? They're going to have to ban it or they're going to have to nerf it into the ground. There's no cards like that that I think are so egregiously overpowered that they absolutely can't exist in their current form. Overall, I think Alchemy is a well-balanced set relative to other magic sets. So those are the, the two areas that I, I think Alchemy did a really good job in, and I think that it was something that was really needed to make Arena more enjoyable. So now let's go through some of the things that I'm going to say are the bad things. They're not as bad as the, the really ugly part of the economy, but there are some things that I'd like to see some improvements going forward. So number one thing I think that still needs to be improved is the meta was shaken up it's still not what I would call diverse. There still seems to be only three or four basic archetypes that you just play over and over once you get 
high up in the mythic ladder. Uh, those would be decks based around Sanguine Brushstroke, uh, Dragon decks, occasional blue control decks, occasional mono green decks, and maybe an occasional cleric deck. Although I think the cleric decks have kind of gotten beaten into submission at this point. But I'd say over 75% of my matches when I play on the ladder now, my opponent's either playing with Sanguine Brushstroke or they're playing Townraiser Tyrant. It's, you know, one of those two archetypes I'm getting a really, really high percentage of the time. And I think that the latter needs to support more diversity than that. And part of the problem with that, I think, is there are a couple of outlier cards from Alchemy that are maybe a little bit better than they need to be. And maybe some of the cards that got nerfed were nerfed a little bit harder than they needed to be. And I think the other thing that's really lacking is there weren't enough meaningful buffs to the cards. So they buffed a handful of cards. They buffed uh, Cosmos' Elixir. They buffed a couple of the class cards. The buffs were all really mild. I've seen a couple of people try Dryad's class. I think I've had the Elixir played against me once or twice. And the buffs really didn't move the needle. Those cards still aren't even close to being competitive. And I think that's a problem. I think that's a problem just in general with the way magic sets have been designed given the arena economy, where a huge percentage of the cards are essentially useless if you want to play on the ladder because they're just not close to being competitive enough. There's too big of a gap between the tier one decks and the tier two decks because all there's a whole bunch of rares that aren't good enough for the tier one decks. There's a whole bunch of mythics that aren't good enough. And so you make a tier two deck and you just play a little bit and you realize my deck is never going to be competitive against one of these tier one decks. And that just really, really cuts down on the, the diversity. And because the way the arena economy works, everybody's incentivized just to focus on the very best decks, or at least everybody who's playing on the ranked ladder and is trying to win is just incentivized to focus on that. So they need to get some more diversity into the alchemy metagame. And with that, I was going to go over a list of cards that I would like to see changed and ways that I think they should be changed. So starting with the first change I'd like to see is to Luminarch Aspirant. I made a video right when they announced how it was going to be changed. I said that they had really nerfed it into the ground. And I think that that has really borne out the fact that they moved the trigger to get the counter from the beginning of combat to the end of turn means that the Aspirant deals damage significantly slower to the point that I think it's probably not a playable card. And the other thing that's happened is that the Sanguine Brushstroke decks have made Meat Hook Massacre so good. That, and Meat Hook Massacre is so good against the White Weenie decks that it's made White Weenie basically an unplayable archetype at this point. It, it's I don't think anyone is going to have any success playing with White Weenie. I've actually tried to make a bunch of videos where I would pilot white weenie decks in alchemy just to show some of the new cards that I was trying. And every time I just get paired against sanguine brushstroke decks and I would just lose over and over. And I, I would, I just decided I couldn't make the video because the deck was just too bad. So I think that they should just roll back the nerf on Luminarch Aspirate, change it back to the way it was originally printed. This has the additional plus of it would change the card back in Historic. And I know a lot of people are upset that these nerfs also apply to Historic. I'm of the opinion that they probably should because I think you want the cards to function the same in the formats that people are going to be playing the most. And I think Alchemy is going to be played more than Standard. So I think that the cards should be the same between Alchemy and Historic just to make it less confusing for people so they don't have to remember multiple versions of cards as much. And I think that in order for that to be the case, they need to fix the economy so you can get your wild cards back. But in the meantime, just rolling back the nerf on Luminarch Aspirant would make it so that that is the card that I think received the biggest hit in Historic, and it was completely unjustified. So I think you, you remove that nerf, and I think you remove a lot of the complaints about the nerfs carrying over into Historic. That is the card that was hit the hardest in Historic, and it certainly didn't need to be hit at all in Historic. Uh, 
Next card I would like to see a minor change to would be Sanguine Brushstroke. I think it is by far the best card in Alchemy. Uh, I think that if you look at what decks are doing really well in the ladder, it's mostly Sanguine Brushstroke decks. And I think that the pro there's a, just an inherent problem with the way the card is designed that it gives you three permanents for three mana. So it's almost impossible for an opponent to put a clean answer to the card in their deck. It's just so strong on rate and it gives you so much material. Nobody can play a one-for-one -one removal spell and actually trade with it in even a neutral way. It's a lot of the same problem I had with the Seeker's Chariot where you just, if if you decide your deck is bad against Sanguine Brushstroke and you look at the spoiler list for, okay, my deck's bad against Sanguine Brushstroke, I'd like to fix that one problem. What card can I add to my deck to fix it? If you're blue, you can say, okay, I'm going to add Negate, I'm going to add a Null, something like that. If you're any other color, you just, there's no card you can add to your deck to specifically target Sanguine Brushstroke reasonably. Your only real option is to just try to play something that is equally efficient and equally hard to deal with and just kind of overpower the brushstroke. And I think that that just leads to a stagnant standard because there's going to be a lot of strategies that just can't come up with a card that can compete with the brushstroke and they can't play a card to remove the brushstroke effectively. So they're just kind of walled off out of the metagame. They, they can't compete. So going forward, I would say Watsi definitely should not make cards that are like this, where they're so hard to deal with with a single removal spell. Certainly, if they're this cheap, and certainly if they're permanent types that are this hard to deal with. I don't think they should nerf Sanguine Brushstroke into the ground, though, because it is, I think, an interesting card to play with. It's an interesting card to play against. I think they do need to just tone it down a tiny bit so that the aggro decks can potentially outrace it. And I think the way to do that is make it so that when you sacrifice blood, you only deal a point of damage. You don't gain a life. Make it so that there, there's less inherent life gain in these drain decks. And I think the aggro decks would be in much better shape to compete. Moving on to the next card I want to talk about, it's Fearsome Whelp. And if I'm being honest, I don't think Fearsome Welp is a good card. I don't think the decks that are playing with it would actually turn out to be good decks if they were running large competitive tournaments. I don't think the Dragon decks with Fearsome Welp would actually show up as top tier decks. And if you get to the if you get high up on the ladder, I would say you never play anybody who's in you know, the top 200 who's actually playing a Dragon's deck. It's really just Sanguine Brushstroke decks and occasional blue decks are the only things you play really high up, play against really high up on the ladder. That's been my experience at least. That said, I know a lot of people really dislike losing to the draws from the Fearsome Whelp where it gets played on turn two, they can't immediately kill it, and it leads to somebody playing a, a Goldspan Dragon and another Dragon on turn four after they played a Townraiser Tyrant on turn three. The card does snowball out of control really ridiculously if you can't kill it and if the person has a really dragon-heavy draw that works out. So I would say that they probably should tone that down a little bit, and I think the best way to do that would make it so that in the instep you only get to choose one dragon to reduce the cost of perpetually by one. And like I said, I don't think the card's too good, so I would also buff it a little bit in exchange for that minor nerf. And I, I would say it should get a buff that when it dies, you should be able to give a dragon in your hand ward two to make it so that there's, it, you're still going to get some benefit from the fearsome whelp, whether it dies or not, unless your opponent exiles it. I think that would be a nice way to make the card so that it was more interesting to play with and against and it led to fewer just complete blowout games, which I think is the problem with the card right now. Moving on to another card that I don't actually think is too good, it's the Inquisitor Captain. At least in Alchemy, the way people have found is the best way to use this is in kind of a Cleric Shell with Righteous Valkyrie and then 
They try to copy it with glass pool mimic. And you do occasionally get really strong starts where you play a Valkyrie on turn three. Then you play a, an Inquisitor Captain and you hit a Glass Pool Mimic and you get another Inquisitor Captain. Then maybe you get a, another Righteous Valkyrie. And at the end of your fourth turn, you just have 20 power in play. That doesn't happen all that often. And there's a really high deck building cost to putting the Inquisitor Captain in your deck. You have to have a lot of creatures in your deck for it to work consistently. And I think that's led to these cleric decks not actually being competitive because you need to have more interaction in your decks in alchemy than the Inquisitor Captain really affords you. The place that I do think that this card actually needs a nerf is in Historic. In Historic, it's so easy to build a deck that can trigger the Captain three or four times the turn you play it because you not only have Glass Pool Mimic, you also have Mirror Image, you have Charming Prince, you have Soul Herder. So I think in Historic, the turn you cast the Captain, you're probably averaging close to three Seek Triggers just from putting it into play once, which means that if you're casting it on turn three, which it's pretty easy to ramp into in turn th on turn three in Historic, you're probably going to be putting you know 10 power in play very, very consistently. It's, it's not getting lucky. It's just what your deck is built to do. And... I don't think that's too good for Historic, but I do think it's sort of oppressive. It makes it so that any sort of normal attacking on the ground creature deck that's trying to just play its creatures for the printed mana value, you just can't compete with an Inquisitor Captain at all. It, one way of looking at it is it's like a Muxus, but it's a Muxus that only costs four mana, and it consistently puts more power and toughness in play than Muxus does. So I think that it should see a nerf just to make it less ridiculous and historic. And I think that the right way to go about that would be to change the wording so you only get to seek if this would be the first time you're using a seek ability on a given turn. To that would make it so that it is not actually appealing to clone. It still would probably be a little appealing to have in a deck with Soul Herder, but it's going to take one turn before you're able to start Soul Herdering it. It's a big nerf. Um, but I do think that it is probably a necessary nerf. All right, moving on to another card that I think is one of the strongest cards in the Alchemy expansion. That's Town Razor Tyrant. It's just really, really great on rate. Um, and the, the potential ability or the perpetual ability that causes you to take two a turn from your land. It's a really strong ability. I don't think this card is too good, but my complaint about it is the arena UI for it is awful. You should 100% of the time get priority in your upkeep before the trigger resolves, the trigger that's asking you if you want to sack your land because you might want to cast an instant. And I know there are people who are going to be saying, well, you could always just set a stop on your upkeep so that you would get priority. And I, I do try to do that. I think it's really annoying to have to remember to do that so consistently when Town Razor Tyrant is being played. And also I'd like to point out, I don't think that that actually works 100% of the time. If you're tapped out the turn the Town Razor Tyrants gets cast, you don't know ahead of time that you need to set the stop. And setting the stop in your upkeep, you can't set it fast enough before the server has already moved to your upkeep if your opponent plays the Town Razor Tyrant in their second main phase. So I, I think that the UI just needs to do a better job of making sure you get access to tapping your land for mana before you have to decide whether or not to sack it. And to be honest, I, this is like, this has been an ongoing problem with the way cards are designed on Arena, that it's always a bit of a guessing game trying to know when you're going to have to set stops to make kind of common plays you would need to make with or against a particular card. I, I think the arena team needs to just do a much better job of consistently anticipating where people are going to want stops on a regular basis and making the card do that. It, it, it's pretty obvious with Town Razor Tyrant that you're going to want to ca use that land to cast instants in your upkeep and then sack it. You should just get the stop 100% of the time. All right, moving on to a different, well, this is a collection of cards. 
I've played a lot of blue control decks and I've been very successful with the blue control decks in Alchemy. My favorite is Esper. I made a, a couple of videos on it and I've been very consistently climbing up the ladder by playing Esper. I think the blue control decks need to be toned down a little bit just to make uh, Alchemy more diverse. I think that they just have a little bit too easy of a lock on winning at the end of the game. Certainly they have too easy of a lock at doing that if you're also going to be nerfing the Sanguine Brushstroke decks, which the Sanguine Brushstroke decks do have a very good late game. I think the blue decks generally can beat it, but it's at least competitive. So Alchemy gave the blue decks a ton of new options. There's Key to the Archive, there's Discover the Formula, there's Unexpected Conversion, there's Geist Channeler. There's a couple of really bad counters that I would recommend you don't put in your deck. I think those are all pretty interesting cards, and I actually don't think any of them are overpowered. I think that the area that the blue decks are too strong in is the creatures they have that close out the game, namely Holebreaker Horror and Leer. Leer, I think, is by far the better of the two, and it does synergize really well with Key to the Archive and Discover the Formula. I think it's just too easy to set up situations where you get to cast your Leer and you've got Fading Hope or Divide by Zero in your graveyard. So your opponent's never really going to be able to kill your Leer or to kill it. They're going to have to play three instants in a row to get rid of it. And you just get a tremendous amount of value, especially if, you've, if you're playing with Key to the Archive and discover the formula. So you've, you've ramped your mana, you've made the spells cheaper. Now you're playing Leer and you've got a bunch of untapped mana when it comes into play. It's just too hard for people to fight through that with removal spells. It just makes removal too ineffective. I would say with Leer, the easiest thing to do to fix it would be to just make it cost one more mana. Make it so that it's harder to get those setups where you can play Leer and you have Divide by Zero to bounce it back to your hand if your opponent does anything. And you've got a two mana removal spell to kill their threat. It, those, it's too easy to take control of a game that way, and I, I think it would open up standard if it wasn't that easy. If you're nerfing Leer like that, probably Hullbreaker Horror then becomes the best thing to do. And Hullbreaker Horror is a design that I absolutely hate. I think it's one of the worst design magic cards in recent memory. It reads like somebody just sat down and said, what are all the good things that I could put on a creature that would make a blue control deck? want to play it. Let's just put all of those on it and then we'll make it cost seven because maybe that'll be fair if it's this good. It's just, it leads to a card that's so incredibly boring to play with. Once you get to cast it and untap with it, it's so hard to lose the game. It just wins the game almost on autopilot. It, it's really, really a very boring card, I think. Even though you can occasionally make fancy plays with it, it just overpowers everything else that's going on in the game so easily that it almost feels like you're not playing a game anymore. And I, I would say that that is the problem with putting Flash and Uncounterable and an ability to bounce itself to protect itself from removal and the ability to bounce your opponent's spells off the stack. It just renders so much of the game meaningless when it's played. So I think the easiest way to fix that would make it so that the horror can't bounce itself back to your hand if it's targeted by a removal spell. You could still bounce the removal spell back to, you, to the opponent's hand and make them cast it again, or you might need to play a counter to protect your Hullbreaker horror, or you might need to play a bounce spell to actually bounce the horror back to your hand. I think that's an easy fix. I still think you, that leaves you with a card that's really not very interesting to play with or against. I'd really love to see just a dramatic change to the card. I, I think that putting uncounterability on a big blue control threat is really, really not interesting at all. I don't think that blue decks need the help of having uncounterability on their expensive cards to dominate the late game. I think that they should just have to have their cards be exposed to counters. When, you, when the best thing you can do in the late game for a blue control deck is to play an uncounterable threat, it really makes blue mirrors very, very uninteresting because it almost always just comes down to the person who makes more land drops wins.
That's something that's generally true when you play a blue control mirror, but when the top end cards are uncounterable, it's 100% true. So I think that's really bad. I think the card just in general is not interesting to play with. I'd be in favor of playing with it as just a five mana for a five, five. It doesn't have flash. It doesn't have uncounterability. I think that way you have a card that's interesting to play with because there's some actual risk versus reward for when you cast it. You know, should you run it out on turn five and hope it lives? Should you wait until you can play it on, you know, turn seven or eight and maybe protect it a little bit? Because it's still going to be a card that takes over the game, but it's going to be a card that you have to put some thought into how you use, which I think would be a huge improvement. So that was a lot on uh, the, the blue control decks. I think there's a lot of ways they could be changed. I do think they need to be nerfed a little bit. Not a lot, but knocking them down a peg, I think would actually you know, open up some more space in Alchemy for other decks to do well. Uh, moving on to kind of a catch-all, I think that there needs to be some more cards that need to be buffed. I think there's a lot of themes that aren't even, you know, they aren't even tier two. Like a uh, white-red equipment deck, they printed a bunch of cards for that. Those cards were mostly bad. Werewolves, they printed a ton of cards in Alchemy, and it's still a bad deck. I think the thing the Werewolves deck is lacking is... It needs a removal spell that's actually good to play, that is a payoff for actually putting werewolves in your deck. Right now, anytime I, I see someone playing werewolves, I just think their deck would be so much better if they're just playing mono green and playing with Blizzard Brawl. Because Blizzard Brawl is an active payoff for playing a mono green snow based mana base. Werewolves doesn't have anything like that. The only thing you get out of werewolves is occasionally you get these nut draws with Tovalar where your opponent can't kill enough of your creatures and you just run away with the game. But for the most part, you're just playing fair creatures and you don't have good removal. So when you're on the draw, if you stumble even a little bit, you can't possibly win. And that's just not a recipe for a successful deck. Uh, I tried playing with the Giants decks a little bit. There's, a, there's a one Giant in Alchemy that was, I guess, intended to make Giants a little bit more appealing. It's still really bad. The Giants, I, I think the Giants need to just be larger. One thing you notice when you play with Giants is your creatures are smaller than your opponent's creatures usually, which doesn't make any sense for a Giant deck. Uh, they also, they, they printed some cards that were kind of nods towards Landfall. All of that stuff is just not good enough. I think they need to try to pick some of these themes and buff them even more than they have. And by buff them, I mean go back to the cards that were printed in standard and find actual meaningful buffs to apply to the cards. Because I don't think alchemy is going to stay fun if it's really only three or four decks that are the top tier and the kind of secondary decks just aren't even close to being competitive. So that's my take on alchemy. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, leave a comment. I'm sure that there's plenty of stuff people agree with and plenty of stuff people do disagree with. And if you made it to this far in the video, please go ahead and sub to my channel. It helps me with the algorithm, which helps the channel grow, which is something I'm really trying to do. So I will see you guys next time. Thanks.